Well, good morning. It's been a heavy, heavy last few days as we look at the world around us and the, um, the violence and the chaos and the injustice. And so one of the things that helps me as I turn to scripture and we're in the Psalms as we've been reading through the Psalms and there's some um, incredible words that are in our Psalm, Psalm 64 today that just really brought me to tears as I was preparing to share with you. Beginning of Psalm 64 says, Hear me, O God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from that noisy crowd of evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent man, they shoot at him suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. And the writer goes on, and I know that's a little bit of our world and just a glimpse into something that, that I can't possibly understand, the fear of the innocence that as they walk about their normal lives, as they go to work, as they go to shoot hoops, as um, they drive their cars and the, and the fear that comes out of that. But if we keep pressing on in the Psalms, we turn in Psalm 65, it says, when we were overwhelmed, you forgave. I don't know if you're feeling overwhelmed as you're having conversations with people, as you're watching the news, as you're seeing cities and places and people that you love dearly with their lives being threatened or lost, cities that are being trashed and destroyed and, and good people rising up to do cleanups. And I don't know what the answer is. I would love to hear from you the things that God's been laying on your heart. As I think about this, as we press in and have the conversation, where I've landed is that we have to have the conversation. We as parents have to have these hard conversations with our kids. We have to talk about the injustice. We have to talk about the, the ways that people are treated and the ways that people respond to the ways that people are treated. But we have to have the conversation with our kids, with our families, in our neighborhoods, and in our church. Because by not having a conversation, we are ultimately having a conversation and staying in silence. And I don't think that's what we're called to do. We're called to wrestle with this tough issues. We're called to wrestle with injustice. We're called to set people free. The end of Psalm 66 that we'll read on Monday says this, but God has surely listened and he heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. We turn to a God who hears our prayers. He knows our hearts and he hears our cries. So I encourage you as you're wrestling with this that you would do just that. But we need to have the conversation. We need to keep talking about it. I think the word uh, for me has just been to not settle for easy answers, but to uh, mine out whatever God might be wanting to say to me. It's just too easy, I think, for me and maybe others like me to uh, just hear the news and just kind of dismiss it as, well, that's just people going crazy and, yeah, it was a bad thing, but the guy got arrested and that's it. And it was kind of just uh, ready to move on. But uh, for many people, uh, this is not a move on kind of moment. This is more of a... Um, take society and send a message. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do. Obviously, some are going too far and it's out of control, but but if you don't tap into that anger, if that's not part of your reality, then I think you really need to get in some conversations with people that that is more their experience. And we're gonna be hitting some great passages in the Old Testament uh, coming up this week. We'll be in Exodus 35 to 38, where they build the tabernacle. And you can just see the, the care that is taken in this a beautiful tent that is going to be a symbol of God's presence uh, with the people. And of course, you look in specifically in chapter 36, where you're going to see Bazalel, and he's one of the first people in the Old Testament to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What a perfect thing for Pentecost, specifically for his craft. So I think that's really cool. We also get the building of the ark, not Noah's ark, uh, for all you Genesis people, this is the Ark of the Covenant. So if you've seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, then this is your moment. So watch those details on the Ark of God's Covenant. 
On Wednesday, we'll hit 2 Kings 8 to 11, and we'll be looking at Elisha again, more great stories from him. And there'll be a string of bad kings. Leadership is just so important. So you see these awful leaders, just note uh, that and see what God tells you. But uh, you'll see Baal worship coming back and forth. And this is chapters and chapters after Elijah, Elisha's master, uh, took care of the prophets of Baal in that big showdown at Mount Carmel. Well, now uh, they're coming back and it's still a problem. On Thursday, we'll hit Jeremiah and we'll get some more pottery images, this time broken pottery. It's a great metaphor. See how it speaks to you. And then we just get judgment upon judgment, this time against Jerusalem herself. Uh, Jeremiah's own people, his own capital. Can you imagine having to speak a hard word of truth uh, to people that you love? It's just a tough, tough situation, but maybe good for us uh, to hear this week. We won't get the restoration uh, promises until next week, so hang in there when it comes to Jeremiah. And finally, in Job, uh, we get Bildad, his friend. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, who is the shortest man in the Bible? And a lot of people think it was Nehemiah, and that's bad, totally wrong. It's actually Bildad, the shoe height. Oh, I'm here all week, so there you go. Bildad, the shoe height, is giving Job massive grief. And uh, so he's, uh, he's just um, uh, condemning his friend. Uh, Job, of course, is in this intense sense of depression, and he's just feeling, it's very psalm-like. He's just pouring out his heart before the Lord and before his friends. He's still clinging to his innocence in spite of his friend's accusation. It's so hard. So friends, we want you to have a great week. Uh, we're looking forward to talking more about reopening and uh, just getting things, uh, things in gear. And so we love you, and uh, hang in there, and uh, keep reading the Old Testament.